Hi, um, so the reason I'm filming this video in this chair in this room right now is because the person uh, whose chair and whose room this was um, died, which sucks uh, in my opinion, and you can disagree with me if you want. Sound off in the comments, that's fine. Go off, king, queen, whatever you are. As long as you're royalty, I'll hear you out. By the way, this is not like a ghost hunting video. I just realized I should probably say that because how I started with like, this is the chair of a dead person, it almost sounds like I'm a, about to attempt to summon the darkness. I'm not. I still might, even without trying. We all could at any point. Do you ever think about that? I'm getting off topic. I've kind of been having trouble fully allowing myself to be sad about what I'm sad about, and you have to, I'm learning, because if you don't let yourself be sad about what you're actually sad about, you'll get not only sad, but irritable about something else completely that isn't actually it. And then eventually you just find yourself in the middle of a text conversation saying like, why don't you care about me? And the person is like, I'm the manager of the apartment building you live in, I don't have to, what? And you're like, oh, that's right, my grandma died. And they're like, okay, dot, dot, dot. And you're like, I peed in the pool last year. Now I'm actually scared. Just in case my apartment manager sees this, that whole thing was made up. I've never peed in the pool or that pool. I've peed in other pools, but that's none of your business. I've been really sad, uh, but there's this voice in my head, not a literal voice. Mom, dad, not a literal voice. But there's this non-literal voice in my head that tells me that I shouldn't be too sad about my 93-year-old grandmother dying because she was 93 and that's expected. And that if I tell somebody like, oh, I'm so sad about my 93-year-old grandmother dying, they're gonna be like, 93? Uh, you actually only get 48 hours of sadness for 93? You're on day seven, chop chop. Time to hit the clubs or something. I need you to quite frankly Frankly, drop it low in public or you're a weak, weak man. Like that somebody's gonna be like, call me when something happens to you that's sad but also kind of rare. Like call me when you have a child and it goes missing and no one can find it. Call me when like you get hit by a bus and it wasn't your fault at all. Honestly, call me when someone under 70 dies. Like I'll send two bouquets to your home. I'll rub your feet. But um, nobody would say that because I think almost nobody is a sociopath. People are never really mean, at least in the ways that I'm expecting them to be. People are usually mean in like kind of a surprising way actually. It's like, whoa, you came at me from the back. I didn't see that coming at all. Um, I don't know, I just had to get that out. I don't know why I beat myself up for my sadness. It seems unusually cruel. Like when I look at it objectively, it seems like a line that you wouldn't even cross with your worst enemy. But yet I insist on treating myself like, like I'm the villain in the movie and I look at my own tears and I'm like, oh, you're gonna cry? But I know deep down, very deep down, a lot of the things I know deep down are like so deep down, it's like that part of the ocean that people haven't even looked at yet. Deep down I know that love is the most powerful thing. I hate that I can't talk about this without sounding like a sympathy card, but when somebody you love a lot is gone, it hits you in the face really, really hard. But my um, sweet and honest, interesting grandmother, uh, who's been in my videos since like 2008 probably when I was like 14 and she was a spry 81 died and I wanted to make a video about it because if you know my channel there's a good chance that you've seen her at least once and she loved being watched by you and um, reading comments that people have left her really meant so much to her. She was kind of addicted to it, which I get. But yeah, this is where she would sit um, when we would eat salmon together. She would sit here and I would sit right there on the couch. She would make me salmon. And let me just tell you, she could not, I don't say this to like make fun of her, but she really could barely move for like the last year and a half of her life. It took her like maybe seven minutes to get to the bathroom. So when she made me dinner, I was like, dang, you made me dinner. Like, when did you start? I say that to say it meant so much to me. Like, I don't think I'll ever have a more meaningful dinner. I'm really anxious about my health 
and eating food can scare me sometimes, and I'm obsessed with my meat thermometer and terrified that any meat I eat will be under 165 degrees Fahrenheit. But she knew how to just stick the fork and kind of flake the salmon, and I trusted that the salmon was done with her, because I felt comfortable with her. Ever since I was a kid, she's always been there, and she always took care of me in a lot of different ways. And I, um, didn't want her to die yet. I feel kind of greedy because she was 93 and she had pain. But I, for some reason, had it in my head that she was, I was like, if anyone's going to live to 100, I just, I was like, I have this feeling. I kept saying, I have this feeling she's going to live to 100. It's a scary moment when you realize that your feelings don't really mean anything. Like the whole house of cards starts falling down. I'm like, check my dad's blood pressure. What's going on with mom's cholesterol? Everyone's gonna die, okay? I've got a new feeling. This is, and there's no way to say this without like offending a few ghosts, but this is my first really big grief I've had. There's been family members who have died that I loved, but I just wasn't close to in this way. And my grandma, I didn't even, I literally didn't even realize it for some reason until she died. I was like, oh, like, that was my best friend. <laughs> like, that was, like, one of my best friends. Like, I would see her once, usually twice a week. I would call her every day. I loved telling her about my life. I loved listening to updates on her life. And, like, I get it, you know? Grandparents die. Like, that's kind of the whole thing with them. Like, from the moment you're born, your parents introduce you, and they're like, Hey, these, this is grandma, this is grandpa, they're already old. Like, the writing is on the wall. Like, you're gonna wanna, you know, go to Marie Callender's with them at least a few times, trust me. And I thought that knowing that meant it wouldn't hurt as bad. Like, I kind of felt, and know this sounds bad, that I would get a call that she had died one day, and I would be like, oh my god, that's so sad, but also, Duh. And that didn't happen. And I think also I just have low expectations for myself and what I'm gonna feel because I've been numb for so much of my life. Whether it's because I was on like the wrong medication or I was on like the wrong medication, if you know what I'm talking about. A little bit of oops, a little bit of sorry, a little bit of did anybody see that? Or just because of depression or whatever, I've been numb. And also a lot of the sad things that have happened in my life since I was like a young teenager have been because I did them. Because I thought I deserved them or it felt like my only option or whatever. But the upside to sad things like that is they don't surprise you. You don't get a call in the middle of the night like, are you sitting down? So it looks like you've been high for the past three and a half years and you spent all of your money. Hello? Sorry, yeah, uh, when did this happen? We think it was sometime around the time that you picked up your hands and opened your mouth and, and did that? I don't know what to say. Um, let me call you back. I'm watching Harry Potter too. But I was afraid that because of that and my numbness, when one of these types of sads happened to me, like the out of my control type of sad and the it comes in waves type of sad, the when you tell people it happened, they don't get as mad about about you not having texted them back for a while type of sad, uh, that I would feel nothing. And um, I was very wrong. And I'm proud to announce I was wrong. <laughs> I've been crying so much. Maybe you're watching this like, okay, uh, join the club. I have a headache right now. But I have trouble with crying. I don't know about you, but do you ever have a moment where you're like, uh, are these things on? Like, can we get the ducts? What about the ducts? I learned about the ducts and they're not here. Can we get the sprinklers running? No, there's no way that I can move through this aquatically. Like everything else is there. Like the heart rate is up. I've got the sinking feeling. The thoughts are there. I know these are crying thoughts. Like these are for sure crying type of thoughts. So where's the uh, physical manifestation? Like I wanna take a selfie. This is kind of cliche. I know people have said this before, but like, I'm asking for a sign. Like I literally said out loud the other day, like, Grandma, if you're there, like, give me a sign. And there was like, you know, it was, and it was just like crickets. And then I'm like a little bit offended, you know? I'm like, okay, so you're mad? Like what's happening? I'm, what I'm hearing is that, what I'm hearing is nothing. 
So what I'm hearing is that you're angry. I have a story actually. The other day I was at the doctor's and there was a baby there and it was crying and I had like a mask on, like a medical mask, cause I'm a cuck. But I wanted to like, you know, when you just attempt to cheer a baby up, like, let me see if I can do, let, let me try and handle it. Let me just, let me try. And this was covered so all I had were my eyes. So I started kind of doing funny eyes. Like I was bugging my eyes out. And if you've watched my videos before or watched this video, you know that I can do that. Somebody actually recently commented on one of my videos that I have Manson peepers. And I Googled that and it's a quote from um, the show The Sopranos uh, where a person was saying to someone that they have crazy eyes because they look like Charles Manson's eyes. Fun fact, my grandfather's name was Charles Monson. So it makes sense. Anyway, I was like raising my eyebrows and kind of going around like that. And the baby, I swear, I wouldn't lie to you about this. The baby stopped crying. And I know it was me. Like we were making direct bugged out eye contact. And the baby looked really peaceful and it just kept looking at me. And you know when like a baby keeps looking at you and you're kind of looking down at your phone again, you're like, oh, the baby's okay. And you you're almost afraid to look at the baby too much. Like maybe just maybe the parent or guardian is gonna catch you and be like, stop, he's not yours. But I kept looking at the baby and making funny eyes and it kept not crying and it looked peaceful. And for a second, I was like, that's my grandma. Which is sweet, but then I immediately was like, why? Like, why would my grandma take over the body of a little baby? And then what happens to the soul of the baby? Like, does it go into standby mode? Does it like switch places with her in purgatory or the astral plane or whatever for like 10 minutes? Is that scary for the baby? Like the baby, I can't imagine would like that. Maybe it would actually. She's like, excuse me, you're in the same room as my grandson. I'll put you right back. Anyway, like I said, my grandma and I have been having these like salmon dinners, um, like once a week or more. Um, we'll have dinner, she'll make food, and I'll pick a movie for us to watch. It's very simple and it, it's meant so much to me. It's been very hard to find a movie that she will like because she was very, very honest. Like the type of honest where you knew if she didn't like your Christmas present immediately. Like she literally would look at it and go, huh. Which, you know, I would always argue is very hurtful, kind of frustrating in the moment. Like, can you just be a person? But I also realized that that's saying like, hey, can you just lie like the rest of us? It's hurtful, but it also means that when they tell you they like something or when they have something nice, to say to you, it means so much more. I have trouble taking compliments. I have trouble believing that people love me. I always believed when my grandma told me she loved me. And that was like some of the last things she said to me. She had had a stroke. She would repeat every sentence she said. She wasn't saying a lot, but she would repeat all of her sentences literally five times, each of them. And she was just saying, I love you, sweetheart. I love you, sweetheart. I love you, sweetheart. I love you, sweetheart. Maybe it was four times. That seemed like too many. And she would reach out for my hand and I would just sit there and, and hold her hand. She loved jazz music and I played jazz on, I just went to like jazz mix on Spotify and she was kind of like falling asleep off and on. And they told me like you don't wake them up when they fall asleep, but I knew she only had like a few more days to live. I was like, come on, wake up from your nap. Like, can we hang out for a second? So I was like, grandma, hey, and the jazz was playing and I went, grandma, look. And I just started dancing. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if the, it was kind of like me in the waiting room with the baby. I was just like, come on, what do you, what does this do for you? And she looked at me and she went, I love it, sweetheart. I love it, sweetheart. And she gave me five I love it, sweethearts. And they all meant more than the last one. That's not true. The first one meant the most, but still. Number five was nothing to sneeze at either. And I'm grateful for that. Actually, I don't know if I'm grateful for that yet. Again, I feel greedy, but there is just a part of me. Cause like I've told a few people about this and everyone's kind of like, you're so lucky to have spent this time with her and you got to see her so much. And there's a part of me still, I'm sure I'll move on from this, but right now I'm kind of like, no, no, I want, I want more. No, I'm not. I'm not done, like I wanna hang out with my friend. Like I'm not grateful because she died and I want her to be alive and I want her to be here right now making this video with me. Not this video, that would be, ooh, that would be such a weird collab. I think she'd like this one. She loved talking about her own death. This, I think she would hit that like button. <laughs> Just simple things like this, like I hate that I have her keys and they've been sitting in the drawer in my kitchen and I'm like, these should not 
not be in the drawer in my kitchen. Like, if it were only four months ago, she would be calling me over and over again, like, give me my keys. Why are they in your kitchen drawer? But now it's like, totally normal, or supposed to be. She had a My Panera card. How often did she go to Panera? She loved a deal. I bet you she went to Panera like every three years, but she had a My Panera card. I also don't feel like I'm at the point yet where like, you know when people say like, they're in your heart. I, I love that and I wanna be there, but right now I'm like, no, she's dead. I don't know, I don't wanna be too cynical cause that's not gonna help me, but I'm just like, I'm in her apartment right now and she's not here. Where is she, you know? I really wanted that to smell like her and to like feel the emotion that comes with that, but no, that's just blanket. My grandma was fascinating. She really was, like I don't say that lightly. She was more well-traveled than anyone I've ever met like before I was even born. She loved baseball and football. She did not look like somebody who would. Maybe that's like sexist or something, but she looked like a little old lady. And I can't lie, like I for the most part don't really care about the expectations that come with being a man and not living up to them or whatever, but I would feel a, a tiny, like a 2% emasculated feeling when I saw her like really understand the Super Bowl. It was impressive. She loved art, she loved museums, she loved classical and jazz music, she ran multiple marathons, she loved going to the gym. Most of all, I think she really loved people and she cared about people. She had friends, like an intimidating amount of friends. Like she was friends with like young, like 35 year olds she would talk about and I'm like, where did you meet them? And she'd be like, the gym. And it's because she cared, like until the end, like the hospital she was going in and out of as she was dying, she was introducing me to the nurses and telling me about their lives. And just being totally transparent, sometimes it would bug me because I just wanted my independence and you know she wanted to know if I was going on a trip she wanted every detail and when I was leaving the train station and when I would get there and there would be a text saying looks like you're arriving and at the time it would be like oh my god but I already missed that and I haven't even gone on a trip uh, yet since she died. Even though it was too much for me sometimes I'm realizing now that she's gone that that was a big foundational part of my life that there was always someone out there that really cared about me and that cared about what was going on with me and, and if I was happy and if I was okay. Before she died I tweeted out that she was in hospice and asked people if they wanted to write in something that I could read to her and she was still there. She was very sleepy and sort of in and out but I read a lot of them to her, maybe almost all of them. She was kind of doing this thing where like, she'd go like this, like to mean like, oh, who, me? Like she was still being kind of funny, even though she was like in and out of consciousness. And those were some of the last things she ever heard. It's so weird. I was thinking the other day, somebody commented on that tweet saying, over a million people have probably seen her before. And I was like, that's crazy. It's been, tough, you know? Uh, basically right when I came back to YouTube a few months ago, her health started declining and um, I've kind of been with her and my family and you know, some things are just sad, like not romantically sad or sad like in a movie where it's sad but it's also beautiful and there's a song playing and you're emotional but you also like shazam the song because it's so pretty and fits so well with the scene. Some things are just like straight up not how you would want them to be. When someone's dying, people say like, I hope they aren't suffering and it's peaceful and all this stuff, but sometimes they suffer and sometimes it's not peaceful. And it's hard to talk about cause like, I don't know, sometimes it feels like the reality of life doesn't fit into social conventions and what you can talk about in a conversation or what people want to hear. Like it's weird when what's going on or what you're seeing in front of you is something that if you were to talk about it to people at like a dinner party, they'd be like, oh, okay, all right. But that thing is also like what's been playing on a loop in your head all day and what you most want to get out. But I miss her and I don't know how like, 
death works literally no like even scientists like they don't know for sure that's like the one thing that everyone's like eh, i don't know so maybe you know you can watch youtube videos like maybe they have the youtube app on the afterlife smart tv and if so um i miss you grandma um thank you for loving me and you made my life better and i miss eating salmon with you so much and I always will. So that's it. Pretend I'm Gaga. What? You can pretend I'm Gaga. Lady Gaga? Lady Gaga. Yeah, see? Look at the dogs are watching us. You know I used to be a nudist. Excuse me? Hey Rally Rascals, welcome to a YouTube video with an old person. What's your name and how old are you? Well, I'm going to be 85 next week and my name is Dorothy, but no, better known as Grandma. <laughs> Scream, scream, bum, bum! Do you scream. mind wearing something for me? You're a dazzling star. Okay, let's go. Go where? Let's let's go with you. You want to go to a club? Okay. I've been asking for years. Are you ready to go to a club? What kind of club? Pokemon, gotta catch them. Pokemon, gotta catch them. Oh, you throw the ball, you go peekaboo, and then you Charmander. Charmander. Chokemon. Chokemon. Parmesan. Here's another birthday present. This is when, if ever you feel sad. Aww. Aww, it's, ooh, this is a very happy dog. Yes, that will wow. make it. And you have to name it. I named it Scooby-Doo, but you might want to name it something else. <laughs> Scooby-Doo. I like that it's named Scooby-Doo. I think I'm going to keep it as Scooby-Doo. And, and if you feel sad, you, you just look at Scooby-Doo, and he makes you happy. You like it. I like him a lot. Um, a lot. Thank you very much for my gift. Sing something. Sing something. Sing something. Sing something. Sing something. Leave me a comment. I'm very lonely. Oh, that was bad. What do, what do you think happens to people after they die? I think they go in another form, like they're essence goes on. Yeah. They turn into a gluten-free pretzel stick. Uh, who knows? <laughs> Thank you guys. That's